again and welcome to my channel. I'm Fraser from Metal Working in France. I operate a little light engineering business here in South West France. Uh, project I have on today, I've got this great big cast iron thing. Uh, this slot here is quite badly damaged. Uh, I've had to weld in some cast iron using cast iron welding rods to fill up all the holes and where it was all broken and, and disfigured. So I'm going to put this on the mount this on the milling machine and it's not going to be easy mounting it this way up so that I can then machine this slot and clean it all up so we can get this thing back into production. I'll have to drill the holes as well and re-tap them because obviously you're going to have to weld, fill all these holes up with welds. Do the best I can anyway. You always get a bit of a, a, a bit of a witness when you weld something and then try to machine it back. You can never lose that bit of welding because uh, obviously you, you break into the surface. So anyway, hope you enjoy this video. If you don't, haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and uh, give me a, a thumbs up at the end of the video if you, if you liked it. And ring the little bell that is up in this corner at the moment, but it's actually on your screen, it's down the bottom here somewhere. So anyway, let's see how this job progresses. I'm just taking small cuts on this just until I get through. Um, machining through welds is always a bit, a bit tricky because you get hard spots in them and uh, obviously it's, it's a very intermittent cut as well. It doesn't do the, the, uh, the end mill or the slot drill any good whatsoever. It's, uh, it makes it quite, uh, quite difficult to machine. So, I've got that almost to size, so I've just got to go, come down here and do the other end. So I'll just machine through here. Not the best way to do it, it's actually pulling it through because I'm, I'm cutting against the well with the uh, with the, the feed of the of the machine so it's trying to pull it through it should cut it a little bit better this way or a little bit more dependable uh, but again very very erratic uh, not very good at all um, so just take this very canny just be very careful with it don't take too big a cut and hopefully the the cutter will last. Tends to do, you know, take quite a lot of wear out of the out of the the, the cutter itself when you're machining something like this because it's so erratic and intermittent cutting, which is never good anyway at the best of times, especially when it's got hard spots in it like this, which obviously in the welding itself. It's, it tends to harden up the steel, put hard spots into it, which uh, tends to wear the, the, end, the cutting edge of the, of the slot drill. Uh, so, but we're getting there. I'm, I'm almost there now. What I've done here, I've actually cut a drill down, a 10 millimeter drill. I've cut it down to uh, make it a shorter drill. Basically because I didn't have enough headroom here in the milling machine. This is as low as the table will go uh, with this thing in the vise. So it, it's, uh, it's quite a tall piece of, uh, piece of kit actually. The uh, reason is, uh, let me see if I can pan out a little bit. Um, let me see, I'll just Take this back out as far as I can. As you can see, it's quite tall in the in the vise itself, so the, mach the milling machine won't go down low enough. Basically, is what it means. So I've cut this drill down uh, 10 millimeter. It's in the collet. The only reason I've done that is because if I put a drill chuck in, it's going to be even further down. I wouldn't be able to use that at all. So I've used a collet chuck uh, with a 10 millimeter push or collet in it, rather. Uh, and put a 10mm drill in. I've cut it, shortened this, it's only about uh, 
about 60 mil long. So I'm now going to drill through this thing uh, so that I can then re-tap these holes. making some horrible noises but then I, I kind of expected that because the weld obviously as I said before when I was machining this on the with the milling cutter uh, the the, uh, the weld leaves uh, high or hard spots in it so the drill doesn't like it very much but I'll get through eventually I think Some would ask why I'm not using any cutting fluid on this. Uh, basically because with the high, high spots or hard spots in the weld, if I put cutting fluid on it, there's a good chance it will glaze up and then it'll just, it'll just burn the drill. So it, it, it literally won't cut. It, it'll stop it from cutting in actual fact. So uh, we'll just keep going with this as, as best as I can. Keep a bit of pressure on it so that it keeps cutting and doesn't glaze. If it glazes, obviously it means it's just going to burn the drill and then the whole thing's just wasted. I need to start all over again or at least get a carbide drill to go through the glazing. Yep, that's gone through, that's quite uh, okay. <clears throat> right, and I'm now going to tap these holes. Uh, so I've, I've started this one a little bit just so that uh, I, can, I can show you on the video. Um, I'm using a machine tap uh, by hand. A difference in a, the difference between a, a machine tap and a hand tap is basically a machine tap you don't really need to back it off as you can see <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the uh, the cutting edge on the on the machine tap is actually washed away and it's the, the front edge the nose is actually tapered so you it doesn't actually form a coil of steel not that it would matter on here because this is cast anyway so it wouldn't form a coil a coil uh, but with this sort of washing away here, it actually breaks off the chip rather than forming a coil which you have to then back up with the, with the tap. Uh, when you're tapping, you, you go a little bit and then you come back to break the, to break the, uh, the coil. 
uh, so it doesn't jam up in the tap. It's not really necessary with this, as I say, because cast iron doesn't form a coil anyway. Uh, it just comes off almost like a powder. I am backing it off just to just to relieve it a little bit, just so that uh, I make sure that I don't put too much pressure on the tap itself. Because if I break the tap in here, it's going to be a real pig to get it out, get the, the broken tap out. So, and taps do break quite easily because they're quite brittle, really. So you have to be a bit a bit gentle with them, fairly have to be careful. Yeah, that's that's grinding a little bit on a obviously on a hard spot in the weld again. Once again, it's one of those hard, those dreaded hard spots. Well, I think we're almost breaking through the back now, actually. So it should get a bit easier now as I as I go through the other side. I'm just you know taking out the taper of the, of the tab now. Uh, it's a bit. Uh... There you go. I can just keep going with this now, and it'll just form the thread right the way through. Go all the way down to make sure I get a parallel thread all the way to the bottom out the other side of the hole so there you go it's it's a bit sticky but uh, that's basically because there are as i say there are some hard spots in the weld but uh, that should do quite nicely i'll just take that out and i can blow it out with an airline to make sure it's clear there you are Well, that's part of the job done. Uh, this bit goes in here, and there's two 12, uh, M12 screws that go in into these two holes here. I don't know whether you can see them very well from that distance, but that'll just that'll all fit together again. The second part of this job uh, is a little bit. Uh, well, I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, basically, this tube uh, has got a step in on the inside. I'm just hoping that I can just turn that step out and it'll be the right size for what I need to go in onto this shaft. This thing has got to go in there, so <clears throat> I've got to put this in the lathe. I'm hoping I don't need to bore all the way through because it's quite a long way to actually drill, well, to bore right through here. I need a very long boring bar. But I'm hoping that this step, if I take this step out that's inside here, perhaps it'll be enough to clear that. So let's get on the lathe now, oops, excuse me, we'll get on the lathe now and see if we can sort this job out. It's all part of the same job really, it all goes uh, to the same customer. As you can see I have got my fire going but I am still wrapped up because it's actually pouring down with rain out there, um, it's not very nice at all actually uh, and it's quite, it's still very cold as well. Okay let's get on the lathe and see how we get on with this. As you can see, I've got this job in the in the soft jaws. Uh, it's a set of soft jaws that I well I can't remember where I got them from, but uh, they're, they're quite extended, so they're quite good for for holding something like this. So I'm now put it. I've got a dial test indicator or a clock gauge on on here now on this bore uh, because I, the, the boring bar isn't long enough to go all the way through. So I've got to go from both ends. So I'm setting this up so that it's nice and nice and set, uh, central to the bore. Um, just got a little bit more to, to tap in. Now I know you can't see the clock, but uh, you'll have to, I'm afraid you'll have to take my word for it. But this clock, uh, this clock gauge is it's within a thousandth of an inch now, the, the centre of this bore. So now I can bore through and go just over halfway, and then when I've done that, I can turn it round and do and come in from the other end on the same setting. And there may be a witness in, in the middle here somewhere, but as long as it's all clearance and the, and the shaft slides in, then it's not a problem. It's a clearance fit anyway, so. It doesn't need to be you know, specifically accurate. Okay, so now let's get on and, and start this machining. Now 
as you can see, I'm now boring this uh, this tube out. Uh, I'm only taking about half a millimetre at a time because uh, it's so precarious, and obviously this this boring bar is sticking out quite a long way, so it it, it could have a tendency to bounce and, and vibrate. So uh, I'll just take small cuts until I get down to more or less what I want as the as the inside diameter. Just run this back now, backwards uh, for the cut, uh, just to make sure it's cleaned everything off, and then I'll measure it again. I think I'm probably going to need at least another half a mil, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll just measure this now. So, as you can see, this shaft slides in quite nicely. It, goes in. it doesn't want to go any further than this because this is actually a bearing face. So it doesn't want to go to that anyway, but it's no, it's sitting down, it's probably a bit of swarf down the bottom there that's cushioning it. But there, yeah, that's uh, that's sliding in very, very nice. It's a nice, nice clearance fit, not too, not too slack, but that's good. I'll take this off the chuck now and, and job done. Well, there you are, that, uh, that job wasn't too bad in the end. A little bit hit and miss with the bit in on the milling machine, uh, trying to get the trying to get it level and get the holes drilled in it, and obviously get the get the slot machined out properly. Uh, like I said, with the welding, you get little hard spots in it, and it, uh, it doesn't do the cutters any good, obviously. But uh, we got there in the end. A little bit tricky, um, and obviously boring out the, the tube as well. Bit on the shaft that went quite nicely. Everything went uh, reasonably smoothly. So, yep, that job's all, re all ready now to go back to the client and, uh, and hopefully get some money, get paid for it. So there you go. We'll see. I don't do it all for the money. I, I mean, I'm supposed to be semi-retired, but um, I'm supposed to be retired, really, at my age. But in the meantime, I'm doing a little bit and I enjoy what I'm doing anyway. And I love making these videos because it, 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 um, basically it's just like having an apprentice when I was... When I was working in industry and as, as a journeyman, I, it was great to have an apprentice to pass on my knowledge onto somebody younger, especially if he was actually willing to learn as well. Some of them uh, don't really want to know, but uh, most, of, most of the lads that I had under my wing, um, they were pretty good. They, you know, they wanted to learn the job, learn the trade, and uh, showed, they were very willing. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, ring the bell, it's down in the bottom here, but this big, this big bell up here that I'll put on the screen, um, and uh, look out for more videos in the future. So in the meantime, uh, I'll bid you farewell, and I'll say goodbye with dirty grubby hands, goodbye.